Hi, this is I from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another book on tape to play for you. Today book is Pocahontas, The Spirit of Giving for 1995. So let's get started. This is the story of one special winter in the lives of Pocahontas and the Jamestown settlers. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Let's begin now. Dear John, thanks to you, a great day has come. The food you sent finally arrived. And tonight, in honor of the occasion, we're having a feast with the Powhatans. I know what you're thinking. The supplies were supposed to arrive in December, and here it is almost March. How did we manage to get by? Now that is a story worth telling. This past fall was beautiful and made all the finer by the return of the Susan Constant with many of our families aboard. I felt so lucky to be reunited with my dear Hannah and little Rebecca. Pocahontas became fast friends with many of the new arrivals, most especially with my daughter. <laughs> Rebecca took to following Pocahontas everywhere, imitating everything she did. Pocahontas was very good-natured about it and used the opportunity to learn more English. She became so good at English, the Chief Powhatan would rely on her when dealing with the settlers. One day, Pocahontas came to the settlement about a serious matter. She was with her father, his medicine man, Kakata, and many of the leaders of the Powhatan nation. They were dressed in all their finery and came to call on the new governor. I was invited to hear what they had to say, along with several other men. Governor, gentlemen... My father has asked me to speak for him and all of our people. He's worried. You see, it is going to be a very cold winter, and he's concerned that you might not have put aside enough food or supplies to help see you through. The governor looked completely bored. A very cold winter. Now, whatever makes the good chief think that? Pocahontas gazed at the governor, willing him to understand. Please, sir, I know last winter was mild, but this year there will be terrible storms. The governor raised his eyebrows in mock concern. Do tell. The geese have already flown south, earlier than in seasons past. The governor only snorted. Hmm. What has that to do with us? We are not geese. But the deer, their coats are thicker this year. That's always a sign of a bad winter. Young woman. It is good of you and your people to be concerned, but your warning is not necessary. We are prepared. You see, we've sent to England for everything we need. Good wholesome English food is on its way, so we won't be needing your berries and beans. Thank you for coming. But if you'll excuse me, I have important things to do. Pocahontas and Powhatan stared at the governor in disbelief. I have to admit, I did too, but he is not a man likely to change his mind. So we just turned and filed from the room. John, I know that I should follow orders, but my heart told me something had to be done. I ran after Pocahontas, drawing her away from her father and the others. Pocahontas, please wait. What is it, Samuel Quincy? The governor doesn't understand the wisdom of your father. He hasn't been here long enough to know your people's ways. He heard last winter was very mild, and is sure he knows what is best for us. Then my people cannot help him. I know your father's judgment is to be trusted. Isn't there something we can do? Pocahontas thought for a moment, then gave me an impish grin. Samuel Quincy, everyone knows I am great friends with your family. What if I were to bring some of the extra corn my people have harvested and leave it at your home? That would be some help. I took the dear girl's hands in mine. Pocahontas, I feel lucky to have you as my friend. And so it began. Almost every day, Pocahontas would come to our house. Her sack full of golden corn. That is, what Miko hadn't taken. We were able to store some before the weather changed, suddenly growing cold and damp, and then snowing. 
snow like I've never seen it before. It came down, and down, and down, every day for almost a solid month, turning our whole world as white as the white cliffs of Dover. But still, Pocahontas came. Then one day, Pocahontas and Miko walked through the door with the saddest looks I've ever seen upon their faces. I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to come anymore. The snow is too deep and my father worries that I'll get caught in a storm. I didn't want to let her know of my fears, so I just looked at her and smiled. Don't worry, Pocahontas. Thanks to you, we'll make it through. Rebecca gave Pocahontas a reassuring hug. Pocahontas, don't you remember? The ship will be here soon. Pocahontas looked at me in surprise. But the winter storms. Can a ship... She stopped in mid-sentence, not wanting to scare Rebecca. I motioned for her to follow me outside. We're not telling the children our fears about the ship. We can't even be certain that it has left England. But Samuel, how will you get by? Don't worry, we will. We have a small emergency supply of food and, of course, the corn that you brought us. The storms have to let up sometime, and then, as Rebecca says, our ship will come in. But it is still early winter. The worst storms are yet to come. Let's not talk of it. If things get bad, I promise I'll come for help. But you don't know the land like I do. You'll never find your way. I smiled and made my voice sound like someone Pocahontas and I both know well. Now don't worry, I've gotten out of worse scrapes than this. She smiled back. You just can't think of any right now. In the weeks that followed, Pocahontas stayed close to home, often playing with Nakoma in the snowy fields. They heard nothing from the settlement and could only hope that we were somehow managing in spite of the snow and storms. But we were not. A fire had ripped through the shed where the last of our supplies were kept, and there still was no sign of the ship. It was only the corn that Pocahontas had brought that kept our poor settlement alive, but just barely. Then, early one morning, while Pocahontas and Nakoma were in the woods not far from their village, Nakoma spotted something in the snow. Pocahontas, look! Nakoma, that's Samuel Quincy's hat. He must have been coming to get help. Something has happened. We have to find him. Hurry! Pocahontas rushed back to her village to find her father. But her father and many of his warriors had left to take supplies to Powhatan villagers on the far side of the forest. Pocahontas sought out the wise medicine man. Kakata, I have a bad feeling about the English settlement. They must be out of food by now. I know my father wouldn't want me to go to Jamestown without him, but I have to. I just have to. Nakoma will come with me. Please, Kakata, may we have your permission to go? Kakata looked deep into the fire. Then he quietly nodded at Pocahontas. At this, she jumped up and ran outside. Nakoma! Nakoma, we're going! Come quick and help me pack! The two girls burst into the longhouse where the Powhatans kept their winter supplies. Just look at all this food, Nakoma. Even warm skins. We can take what the tribe won't need and there'll be plenty left. But Pocahontas, how will we carry it all? Pocahontas looked around for a solution. Then she shouted, Miko! Miko is going to carry it? No. Guess again. Nakoma spotted Miko curled up in Pocahontas's canoe. We'll fill the canoe and pull it along. Good thinking. They must have been about halfway to Jamestown when a bad storm blew up. You've never seen anything like these storms, John. The snow blows so thick you can't see your hand in front of your face. The wind snatches your breath away. Your cheeks sting. Your eyes water. Even the air goes so white that north, south, east, and west all look the same. Such was the storm that beat down on our friends. Pocahontas, I don't think I can go on. Every part of me is freezing, and I can't feel my toes or fingers. I know, Nakoma, but we have to keep on. But we can't see where we're going. 
I don't even know which way our village is. We could be walking in circles. Just then, a huge rush of wind burst through the trees, dumping what seemed like a mountain of snow off the branches onto Pocahontas and Nakoma. <gasps> By the time the girls helped one another and Miko dig out, they both knew it would be too dangerous to go on. I fear, John, that if that had been I, I would not have made it. But Nakoma and Pocahontas knew just what to do. Nakoma, let's move the canoe under that tree. Acting swiftly, the girls pushed the canoe up against a tree where the snow hadn't drifted. Then, working as quickly as frozen fingers would allow, they took the skins and draped them over the branches of the tree, tying them down to make a lean-to. The rest of the skins they used to make a bed. Nakoma shivered. At least we have lots of food. Pocahontas reached up and pulled down an icicle. And water, too. The next morning dawned sunny and bright. The first sun anyone had seen in weeks. Pocahontas opened her eyes on a world so quiet, so still, so perfect, it took her breath away. Nakoma, look. The trees were all hung with crystals that swayed in the air like glittering jewelry and every branch and bough was wearing a mantle of pure white snow. When the early morning sun hit the trees, turning the snow and icicles into rainbows of color, Nakoma gasped. Pocahontas, have you ever seen anything so beautiful? After Pocahontas, Nakoma and Miko shared another meal of nuts, berries and icicles, they packed up the canoe and once again headed for Jamestown. As they neared the settlement, Pocahontas grew very quiet. I feel so lucky to have seen this morning. I know just how you feel. Now if only we find Samuel Quincy, I think this day will be perfect. But the first person they saw on reaching Jamestown was not me at all, but Chief Powhatan. Worried about Pocahontas, the chief had come in search of his daughter. She threw herself into her father's arms. Once assured that both Pocahontas and Nakoma were safe, the chief turned his attention to us. Like the land he'd just come across, Jamestown was also covered in snow. With some drifts so high, they reached the top of buildings. Powhatan and his warriors began at once to help us dig out. Pocahontas went up to Powhatan. Father. I fear something awful has happened to Samuel Quincy. I must try and find him. Nakoma smiled at Pocahontas. Come on. I'll bet he's safe and snug at home, sitting in his favorite chair. My wife saw them coming, and before they could even knock at the door, she had flung it open and was hugging both girls. Come in, come in. Samuel kept saying he knew you'd find a way to help. As for myself, I was so happy to see them that, in spite of my fever, I managed to sit up in bed. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get through, Pocahontas. When things couldn't get worse, I started out for your village. But a storm came up and I lost my way. I even lost my hat. I knew if I didn't retrace my steps before they were blown away, I might not ever make it back. So home I came, crawling at the end. Rebecca gave me a hug. We heard him calling. He'd almost made it back to our cabin and was in pretty bad shape. But we're making him all better. I smiled at Pocahontas. Seeing you, I feel better already. She smiled back. I had to come. I found your hat. And a good neighbor always returns what she finds. Speaking of which... Pocahontas and Nakoma dashed from the room, then skipped back in carrying baskets full of nuts, corn and berries. I found some other things I thought you and your friends might be missing. John, those supplies and the rest her people sent in the weeks to follow kept us alive through this harsh winter. So when the ship finally arrived two days ago, there was only one thing to do. Have a party. A celebration in honor of Pocahontas and the Powhatan people. Everyone's coming. There will be singing and dancing and, of course, eating, too. 
good, wholesome English food, as well as beans, corn, walnuts, and cranberries, which I've heard have become the governor's favorite. Your friend, Samuel. was the end of the story. If you'd like to hear it again, just turn the tape over. So that was Pocahontas, The Spirit of Giving from 1995. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We'll have another video coming out real soon.